Okay, good morning, Paul. Good morning. Yeah. Wonderful. As you see, the room's decorated very nicely again for all oh, the yes. So we'll have one shot after the presentation. Today's speaker is Dr. Luke. He's from the Pain and Wellness Group. Uh, they have an office over by uh, Heidi. And that's strip mall over there. So he's going to talk about his business. So, Dr. Luke. Thank you, Officer Lee. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Dr. Luke Stringer, and I'm a local health and wellness expert. I'm actually a physician at where Dr. Runyon just, uh, so Officer Runyon just told you, uh, the Pain and Wellness Group, which is right in the high professional class. The definition of doctor is teacher, so it's a passion of mine and the Pain and Wellness Group to get out into the community and educate the local community on things that are very pertinent to them. And we've been asked to come here today and talk about uh, osteoarthritis or OA. And that's what we're going to spend the next 30, 40 minutes doing, discussing osteoarthritis, uh, highlighting the kind of symptoms, um, some treatment methods, and ways that you guys can get some help um, if this information is pertinent to you. So we'll go straight into it, guys. Um, what is osteoarthritis? So the definition, textbook definition is, osteoarthritis is primarily a non-inflammatory degenerative disorder of movable joints characterized by an imbalance between a synthesis of degradation of the articular cartilage leading to the classic pathological change of destruction of cartilage. So to put that into layman terms for you, uh, first of all, non-inflammatory. So osteoarthritis shouldn't cause big swelling, big edema. Okay, some arthritis do that, for example, rheumatoid arthritis, but osteoarthritis shouldn't. Second thing, movable joints. And this is a movable joint right here. So what we find in a movable joint is one bone will meet another bone, and those bones will be encapsulated by connective tissue. Okay, and within that capsule will be synovial fluid. That's a movable joint. So any movable joint, be it your finger, your wrist, your elbow, your shoulder, your neck, your back, your hip, you need your ankle a fair game for osteoarthritis. Anything that moves, okay? Uh, and the imbalance, effectively, is the joint not functioning properly. And it doesn't function through a number of ways. It might be through movement, it might be through abnormal weight bearing, it might be through deficiency in uh, bone calcium or deficiency in the synovial fluid that can lead to degeneration. And classic pathological changes of destruction of the colon. So effectively a telltale sign of arthritis is the joint space narrows and when it narrows it changes shape and kind of gets all uh, uh, what we call morphology. It kind of changes shape and changes function effectively. So that's effectively what we're talking about today. Osteoarthritis incidence is found in 80 to 87 percent of people aged over 55. It's found in over 95 percent of people of 65. So all you guys in this room, you're all good. Obviously this doesn't apply to you, right? <laughs> it's found in 40 million adults and 20 million of those have hip or knee arthritis and only 10 million of those treated. To 10 million people, or half the people that have arthritis in the big areas, the knee and the hip, still deal with it. And what we usually find in the medical field is instead of people dealing with it and being able to go about their daily routine, what they'll do is they'll change their daily routine. So who likes to get up and go for a walk in the morning? Walk the dog, go to the coffee shop, hang out with friends. What we find a lot of the time is that people will stop doing things they enjoy and change their life around arthritis. And that's something that we shouldn't allow because there's things we can do to help and prevent and treat arthritis effects. Um, five million people have severe degenerated joint disease, and we'll get into that. And 400,000 people, or 400,000 total knee replacements, and 160,000 total hip replacements a year. So just based on the stats, you can see it's very prevalent in our society. And just to give you some stats, financial stats. Uh, arthritis per annum costs this nation $218 billion a year. And $47 billion of that uh, uh, is a loss of earnings. So effectively that's people not going to work because they have knee pain or back pain. Or that's people retiring early because they can't function anymore. So you can see it has a huge effect on our society, both in incidence of who it affects and also on our economy too. Okay? So progression of disease. So this disease is split into three phases effectively. Uh, mild, moderate, severe. We're going to go through those now. So, first to sign disease, what we call mild, uh, mild OA. Cartilage starts to wear down and thin out. To, to again, give you some layman to, imagine 
a sponge, okay? And you have a sponge at the top of your bone and the bottom of your bone. That's affecting your cartilage. And that's like the shock is over in a car, okay? That's what helps our body and our joint deal with forces. So when the cartilage starts to wear down and thin, imagine you're just shaving those sponges now, okay? So there's less shock to be absorbed, and then the joint space that the shock is being absorbed in is closing down too, okay? So affecting the joint becomes less effective of absorbing forces. And a force could be walking, it could be lifting and picking something up. Um, so as that joint starts to thin and wear out, it has an effect on the body. Now, it may not have any pain or stiffness or be hindering any activity unless it is prolonged. So affecting this right here, a couple of things. Pain sometimes is a poor indicator of health. Only 15% of our nerves are sensory. That means no pick up a pain signal. 85% of our nerves in our body are asensory. So they, although you may not be feeling any pain and discomfort, it doesn't mean that the arthritis, the disease, isn't in effect and it isn't having an effect on that joint. Um, so the key to this is, if you do have arthritis, it's critical to catch it here and diagnose it early because there are lots of effective ways that you can really slow down that disease and by slowing it down, you prolong your activity and you prolong your functionality and you prolong you know, all the things that we enjoy in life. Effectively, we start to slow down a lot less quickly. So moderate arthritis, and this is a picture of a knee joint here, we'll explain that in a moment. So moderate arthritis is thinning the cartilage causes bones to rub on each other, causing pain with weight bearing. So to go back to the analogy of the shock absorber and the sponges there, this here is a joint and this should have a nice big space through here. However, the cartilage is beginning to thin and by thinning these bones are now touching. And when those joint bones start to touch, the joint space narrows, and then the pain tends to worsen as the day progresses, and in present with most activity. So obviously the longer we're on our feet, the more pressure we're putting through those joints, the more pain we're gonna get. Or the more movement we do, if we're in our walking club, you know, we take a dog out for a walk, we're exercising, the more movement we put through that joint, the more pressure that joint taking, as we said, the less shock is over in the the cartilage which has been thinned down, can't absorb as much force, so the body signals to give out pain, ache, stiffness, things of that nature. And sometimes you can get some sort of a de uh, uh, inflammation, but it's more of a heat inflammation. So the joint won't necessarily swell, but it will give off some radiation and heat. Now this is critically important to get this diagnosed and to get this treated, because if we don't, and obviously the degree progresses, and when you're in this, this phase here, the disease progresses at a rapid rate, and it's really hard to stop and reverse when we're in this phase right here. And then obviously we've got severe arthritis, and that's bone on bone contact, and that's where it does create some form of inflammation, okay? And so that, and that's imagine a car running with no oil, okay, or no gas in it, effectively the car can't run, and that's effectively what the joints do. We do get pain, and we can have swelling, and develop an osteophytes, so a osteophytes are bone spurs. That's when a bone decides to change shape and through all the pressure you're putting through the joint, the bone can't handle that pressure and it'll start to splinter out and effectively they're the bone spurs. Uh, and the pain is generally constant. And if you're in this phase right here, it's, it's difficult to get back from. The okay, case is manageable, but it's difficult to correct. So common treatments, NSAIDs, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, number one. Number two, physical therapy. Number three, hyaluronic acid injections. Number four, bracing. Number five, total knee replacement. Okay? And these are the most common ways that we, as a nation, will treat osteoarthritis. And we're going to get into those in some detail right now. So, NSAIDs. Okay, not a story about the inflammatory drug. We all know these as Tylenol, Advil, Aleve, all those things that you can buy over the counter. And they're typically prescribed as a first line of treatment often tried by patients prior to a physician visit. So who's here had some pain in their knee, in their hip and shoulder, and they just pop some Tylenol to help relieve that pain? Most of us, right? Okay. So the advantages, they're easy to take and they're ready to available. You can go to Walgreens, you can get some, and you can obviously take them at your pleasure, effectively, or, or as your need. Uh, the disadvantages, first one, I want to skip around this one, and I want to come around to here. So it does not slow down the progression of the disease. So effectively what it does is it just masks the symptoms. It may help alleviate the pain. The mechanism which is causing the pain, i.e. causing the arthritis in the joint, is 
it's still prevalent and it's still having a huge effect on that joint. So in fact, it's kind of just papering over those cracks in the wall. The cracks are still there and you just can't see them, okay? But this is hugely important here. Gastrointestinal, hepatic, liver, renal, kidney complications, especially when taking over a long period of time. If we take Tylenol, Advil, over a long period of time, it creates bleeding within our gastrointestinal and our renal system. It creates inflammation whose organs can't function as effectively. So effectively, we slowly start shutting down on the inside. And that, in turn, has an effect on the body dealing with the arthritis. Effectively, we can't process the body, get enough lymph into that uh, into area, get enough antibodies into that area to help with that disease. And then in other studies, if you suffer from any sort of heart disorder, if you took Tylenol consistently for a week, you will double your chance of being submitted to the emergency room with congested heart failure. So if you're on any blood pressure medication, any cholesterol medication, um, any sort of medication to do with the, with the uh, cardiovascular system, if you took Tylenol Advil for a week uh, uh, consistently, you will be, your, your risk of being a minute hospital is double. So these have got to be used as kind of just a form of relief, not a form of treatment. When the pain's too much and you have to do something about the pain, but at the same time, it's just a temporary relief. It's not going to fix it long term. Okay. Physical therapy typically consists of strengthening exercises. Good. Non-impact aerobic activity, reduced weight, balance gain, and posture exercises. These are all really good. However, this one, for me, if it's done on its own, is an issue. And it's an issue because as we age, we need to keep our bones nice and healthy, right? Because as we age, we lose calcium in our bones, osteopenia, our bones become brittle, effectively. Uh, and that's poor for our health. So the key to aging well in, in terms of our bone health is to have healthy bones. In order to have healthy bones, we have to have weight-bearing activity. So at some exercise point, you have to have weight-bearing activity, and we have to have some sort of resistance to that activity. And there's lots of small ways you can do this with really light weight and really light impact, which will have a huge effect on uh, uh, osteo health, on bone health. And that's something you guys should definitely be doing in your exercise re uh, regime. I'm sure some of you do the water aerobics or the chair aerobics or chair yoga. All that's great, keep doing that. But you have to put some sort of weight-bearing, resistant-bearing uh, activity into your exercise regimen. And if you do that, your bone health will be far, far superior to someone who won't, okay? So advantages, focuses specifically on needs of patients. So every patient is different, and every knee, hip, shoulder, neck, low back is different, okay? So it has to be tailored to you, because one size doesn't fit all, unfortunately, okay? Individual attention by a therapist, and this is key. You've got to have some hands-on therapists. You've got to have an expert, a physician, guiding you through the therapies, making sure that the therapies are done correctly and safely. This advantage is doing it by yourself has little to no effect on long-term joint health, okay? So, to talk about the knee effectively, if we got all the muscles in our thigh nice and strong, all the muscles in our leg nice and strong, that would make that joint nice and stable, but there'd still be a mechanical dysfunction in that joint. In fact, it might not be moving properly. It might be abnormally weight-bearing. So you can be as strong as you like, however, if the mechanism is faulty, you're still gonna have the issue there. So PT is certainly something you should be looking at if you suffer with any sort of joint pain, but it has to be done in, uh, in conjunction with other, uh, other forms of therapies. Hyaluronic acid injection. So this is an injection to need that lubricates and cushions your joint, made from a natural sort of similar to healthy joint fluid. So effectively, inside our joint, which I explained earlier, we have synovial fluid. Imagine synovial fluid, which is comprised in every movable joint in your body, that's your spine, shoulder, elbow, wrist, hips, knees, ankles, is contained in synovial fluid. Imagine synovial fluid as the oil in your car. If you don't have oil in your car, it doesn't run very well, right? So as we degenerate, we start to lose synovial fluid. We start to lose viscosity in that joint. And by losing that, that means there's less lubrication in the joint. When there's less lubrication in the joint, as we move, exercise, do our daily functions, that joint starts to rub together. By rubbing together, it creates inflammation. If we're in a severe phase, it can uh, create pain. It can obviously create degeneration. 
So this right here is pretty much state-of-the-art stuff. This is as far as you can go in a medical field, unless you do some sort of stem, research, uh, stem cell research. Uh, but hyaluronic acid is effectively a natural substance that replaces the cyanobium fluid. And if you have lost cyanobium fluid, as if your joints degenerate, you would have lost it. You need to replace it, because that's like the oil in your car. And we keep those joints nice and lubricated, and moving nice and slick. That's critical to a healthy joint, movement, okay? Advantages, one injection of serious injections can provide relief for several months. And relief is by lubricating the joint and allowing that joint to move freely instead of moving less freely. Disadvantages, it does not address mechanical wear and tear, i.e. weight bearing activity. So the joint will move, but if the joint's moving in an abnormal fashion, it will still have, uh, 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 it'll still have an effect on that joint, as we're going to come to now. So bracing, this is a great way of uh, helping the joint move and move uh, with even weight bearing. So a brace is applied to the leg that takes pressure off the affected compartment. Effectively shares the lower joint weight bearing. So if we're going to concentrate on the knee for a moment, a lot of the times, particularly in women, what we find is as a knee begins to degenerate, we get some sort of valgus stress. And a valgus stress is where those knees just start to come together. Okay. So when our knees start to come together, the inside, the medial part of our knee, begins to thin. And when that joint begins to thin, then we put more pressure on the inside of our knee. As it thins more, we put more pressure on the inside of the knee, more pressure. So effectively, the, uh, the, the greater the degeneration, the thinner the joint space in it, we still move and we exercise and we have that thin joint space, it just accelerates the degeneration on that side of the knee. And this is what the bracing really, really helps with. So uh, effectively, by adding a brace, what it can do is take pressure, for example, off the inside of the knee. So when we walk or we step or we do any form of exercise movement effectively, the weight that is going through the knee is evenly displaced because the brace helps take the weight off the inside of the knee. Did anyone ever see, watch the NFL here? Right, so uh, I hope you guys watched the Super Bowl last Sunday. And all those big linemen who have those big braces, they're obviously so big, 350, 400 pounds, their joints are in a huge amount of pressure. So in order for them to help their body to help uh, uh, deal with the pressure, they wear those big braces. And it's similar for us guys too. Um, so advantage, it's not invasive, uh, and it can reduce additional wear and tear. It's critically important. We're gonna take weight off the affected side so we can slow down that degeneration. Disadvantages, there are some, some braces may be cumbersome for some patients, and it's just par for the course, unfortunately. If we're taking weight off the joint, we have to have some sort of substantial uh, brace in there. Uh, I'd say that's quite a small one uh, for the benefits that we get. And then the final, um, the, the, the final kind of uh, treatment method here is a total knee replacement. So these are typically recommended when a patient has severe pain that prevents normal functioning and other more conservative methods have failed. So the end of the femur, to explain what's going on here, so the end of the femur, which is this bone right here, this soft thigh bone, uh, and the top of the tibia, which is this big leg bone here, uh, and then the patella, which is this kneecap right here, uh, along with the patella, they're replaced with metal and plastic components. So in fact, you have a whole new joint in the body. Okay. Now obviously, the advantages of this here are worn down surfaces are replaced. So that bone on bone contact that creates the pain and the inflammation, the swelling, which you will get because you're in a severe phase here, uh, it is reduced because the surfaces are now more lubricated, you have titanium or you have some synthetic material in there, and the outcome is reduced pain. But there are huge disadvantages. It's an invasive surgery, okay, and obviously an inherent risk of surgery. For example, blood clots. Okay? Uh, it requires an extreme amount of physical therapy and exercise post-surgical uh, surgery for optimal outcomes. And the, the physical therapy post-surgery is quite difficult. You're in there for uh, six to 12 weeks and you have some intensive physical therapy to make that knee function. So you have a whole new job. And also, because of the uh, other structural problems in your body, effectively, you have a whole new joint in your body that the body's not used to. So usually what we find with people with knee replacement in our office is they'll start compensating on the other knee, or their hip will compensate, their low back will compensate, their ankle will compensate. So their knee's fixed, but as they like to exercise, they have other problems in their body, effectively. So this is a picture uh, of two knees, okay, because the knees are really easy to, to explain and show you some degeneration. So this picture on the right here, my right, your left, um, to explain, this is that femur we just looked at, the thigh bone, and this is the shin bone right here, and we call that the tibia. 
And what we should see underneath, we should see this joint space from this inside all the way through here to the outside, it should be nice and thick. Okay, should be evenly spaced from the outside to the inside. Uh, it should, all these edges throughout the bone here should be nice and smooth, no kind of sharp edges. And this right here is full of synovial fluid. That's a really healthy joint. Okay, and that's what we should see. However, when we see arthritis degeneration in the knee, we start to see the changes in the knee. Okay, so again, the thigh bone, the leg bone. First thing we should see is nice smooth edges. Can everyone see here how you've got these kind of jagged edges on this bone here? These bone spurs. That's obviously going to create pain and discomfort. The second thing we see is the joint space. So you see how you've got a nice big thick joint space on the outside of the leg there? However, that medial side, the inside, we just discussed is seriously degenerating here. This is pretty much bone on bone. Okay, so this is definitely a phase two to a phase three uh, degenerated knee. And not only are you going to have the decreased joint space, but where's the synovial fluid gone in there? There's no, there's no lubrication in that knee. And that's someone that has obviously got arthritis in the knee and is looking at uh, a lot of dysfunction and something that should definitely get fixed. Now, we kind of discussed uh, you know, those movable joints, but every joint in your, in your body, effectively, uh, that's a movable joint is fair game for arthritis. And we kind of explain that to recap for you. A, a, a synovial joint is a lower bone, an upper bone, encapsulated by connective tissue, and then the disc space should be nice and thick and plump, and it should have lots of synovial fluid. And this on this side here is a nice healthy neck. And when we look at the neck, you should see a nice even curve, nice smooth edges to the bone, and then you should see nice thick joint space. And then obviously each anatomical position or joint in your body will have a certain presentation. However, when we see degeneration, a lot of times we see a change in the joint shape. So this neck right here is now going straight. And when the neck goes straight, the weight of the head isn't carried at the back of the disc, at the back of the spine, it's now at the front. Because the spine, because the head weighs 10 to 12 pounds and sits at the front of the spine, these joints are getting abnormal weight bearing. Just like we saw with the knee here, abnormal weight bearing. When we create an abnormal weight bearing, then the joints start to degenerate. So what happens? The bones start to point. We get bone spurs. And the discs start to thin. The synovial fluid starts to go. And that obviously becomes with, with pain and with discomfort. So what is the answer? So any movable joint, what we need to be looking at is you need to lubricate that joint. Because when we have degeneration, the synovial fluid is gone. So we need to replace it, we need to lubricate that joint. And then as we saw with that knee, we need to make sure that that, that, that joint is braced, so the, the uh, weight bearing, be it in the knee, the hip, the lower back, is displaced evenly, so it doesn't accelerate that degeneration. And then lastly, we need, to phys we need to do physical therapy, we need to get that joint stable, and then we need to get that joint nice and strong, so you can deal with all your, you know, your daily activities, uh, all, your, all your function that you have every day. Um, so that's just a picture of that joint. So last slide here. Um, what do you want to know? I'm going to open up the floor in a moment for questions, but can we help you? Yes, we can help you. The Pain and Wellness Group is a fully board certified medical office, and we can do all the above that we've just discussed and more. We're located just a mile around the corner of the Highview Restaurant Plaza, um, and we have access to, obviously, all the facilities we've just discussed. Um, our youngest patient in the office is two months old. Our oldest patient is 94 years old. So we help from from uh, uh, we help the youngest types of people with issues to the oldest types of people with issues. So effectively, what we're going to do here in a minute, I'm going to have Kim come around and hand out a flyer. And the flyer, or should I say, flyer, it, it, it's kind of like a, a summary of what we discussed today. So it's going to discuss, you know, the disease in general, the definition. It's going to discuss the people it affects, and it's going to have the treatment method. And the last bit on this is, can we help you? The pain and wellness group certainly can help. So what Tim's also going to do today, if anybody of you sitting here today has found that uh, information pertinent to you, resonate with you, if you're dealing with neck pain, shoulder pain, low back, hip pain, knee pain, ankle pain, the pain and wellness group could help. Uh, procrastination is usually a thief of power. Uh, and what I like to say, we need to keep people moving and functioning for as long as possible. And order to do that, we need to stop the degeneration process which effectively arthritis. So when Kim's hands out the fly with all the, the cool info we've got for you today, she'll also be offering you guys some of our time. And that time will be to come on in and meet one of our physicians 
officers to sit down with you guys and do a real detailed consult. And then based on the consult and what's pertinent to you, be it knee pain or back pain, neck pain, shoulder pain, we'll do a real detailed orthopedic examination. Based on the examination findings, range of motion, uh, orthopedic test, positive, negative, then if you feel the need, we'll shoot some x-rays. Now our, uh, uh, our, our x-ray system is digital, it's hospital grade, we should stay at your x-ray. And then based on the consultation findings, the examination findings, and the x-ray findings, we'll sit down and we'll explain to you what's going on. We'll explain to you why you're having knee pain, why you're having neck pain, why you're having back pain. And then based on what we see from your results, we'll be able to recommend some treatment for you and be able to so you can get some relief from your pain. Um, there's obviously no cost to that um, to you guys today. It's a totally complimentary service. And then just to say thank you for having us guys in today and uh, because you want to work with the Villa Park Police Department and Hosanna and all the good things she does, we're going to actually offer a free hours massage for anyone who wants to come on in there. Um, I'm going to open up the, the, the floor for questions. Hopefully you have lots for me because we've got a good about 15 minutes until your food arrives. But Kim, you want to head around and uh, sit some day dates and times and then I'm going to shoot some questions. So, who's got a question for me? Dr. Lillard. Yes. How to... How does someone engage you from their general uh, doctor, as in a referral? Do we get a referral to you, or do we just come in? And what type of insurance and what type of insurance coverage uh, can cover your services? Sure. So we're, we're a medical office, so you can come on in, and we're a private medical office, so you can come on in off the street. You don't have to be referred in. Second of all, obviously Medicare, we work with Medicare, and Medicare uh, covered the majority of the cost of whatever we do in our office. And a lot of times, um, what we find in page two is they have a supplemental insurance to their Medicare services, and that usually picks up the rest. So a lot of times, what we do in our office has no out-of-pocket cost to Medicare. But again, that pertains to certain people uh, and what they have going on and what they, have, and what they need. We obviously work with all age ranges, uh, and we're in network with all the major insurance carriers, uh, and we work with all major insurance carriers, and effectively, uh, depending on the patient, their symptoms and their treatment plan will depend on what coverage they have, etc. But to answer your question in short, come on in. Come on in, we'll be happy to tell you. There's no need for a referral. Any more questions, guys? I know you've got some. Yes? Yeah. Okay. 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 Forever. So that's why you're probably going in once in now. The big thing with cortisone is it's a steroidal injection. So when we have a steroid put into our body, typically cortisone, it sucks all the calcium out of our bones and it actually makes that bone weaker and more brittle. So for example, let's say you have an injection this year, next year, the year after, you're allowed three to five in your life. Okay. So in three years, you're going to be right on the board line of you are having another steroid injection. Also, it has been a steroid, um, it has huge effects on blood sugar. Yeah, you could so if you're diabetic, <laughs> okay, so if you're type 2 diabetic, it has a huge effect on blood sugar. So I would suggest yeah. and trying more what, what I would call conservative medicine, i.e. non-drug approach, and that would be through the hyaluronic acid because that's a natural substance, um, maybe through some bracing and some strengthening work. And the key to that is not allowing the disease to degenerate further, because if it degenerates further, then at some point he may want to give you a knee replacement. And if he doesn't want to give you a knee replacement, then you're kind of running out of options if you've had several more zone injections. Well, unfortunately, you only have so many in one in your life. Maybe diabetic too, but you don't want to play around with any blood sugar. So. so you should come on in and at least let's have a look at you and see if we can help you for sure. Yeah, you're welcome. Do you think a knee or Tylenol is one better than the other, and how much is too much? To be totally honest with you, uh, 
than your I think we're all, you know, about the same. You know, when you watch the commercials on TV, one will say it does this better than the other. But it, the, the, the chemical makeup of all of them are effectively the same. Uh, it's just a different drug company that brands them and uh, pushes them. So I wouldn't say that one is better than the other. But if you are taking it, there is a limit to how many you can take in your lifetime. And the limit's anywhere from... Uh, it's around a thousand that you're allowed to take in a lifetime, and actually the, the average Americans can take uh, up to five thousand um, in their lifetime. So if you are taking them, you really should be taking them as last resort, because if you take too many, it will have a huge effect on that renal system. It will create inflammation in the GI, which can affect digestion, that can affect diet, it can affect weight loss, it can affect nutrition uptake in the body. So you can have an knock on things, you know, fatigue, uh, irritability, insomnia, all those things that healthy gut is hugely important. So if you're constantly taking them, you want to kind of reduce that as best as possible. Uh, I would strongly suggest you not to take them okay. continuously because you do get a cap. Um, you didn't tell you about this. You do have a job in the Journal of Medical Association. I have a rough uh, estimate how many you should take in your lifetime. Uh, it's around a thousand, and the average amount is about. Uh, and you do take them. Often enough, unfortunately, it's going to create a lot of inflammation, particularly in your, in your intestines, and then it's also going to inflame the kidneys. But that's hugely important for health in general. So, if you're taking it because you have some sort of ailment, I would suggest diagnosing why, why you're getting that ailment, as in getting to the root cause of it, and then maybe try some non drug approaches. Okay. So I take it, you know, like when I go to bed, so I get to sleep with all right. the and I'll take it in the morning so I can get through the day. Okay. But I'll reconsider it. For sure. Yeah. And like I discussed, uh, there are other ways you can approach it, uh, and what I would call more conservative ways. Um, first of all, it would be find out exactly how bad that arthritis is. And then depending on how bad it is, it depend on how much, you know, treatment you need. Yeah, and replacing the schedule. It is? Yeah. Okay. So if it's scheduled, then, you know, it is scheduled for sure. You're you welcome. <laughs> Hello, sir. For sure, so glucosamine is certainly good for you, conjoint is certainly good for you. The trick to glucosamine and conjoint is taking it before the degeneration occurs. Because a lot of times, once we degenerate, can't reverse that degeneration, uh, unfortunately. So the key to it is take it early enough before the joint degenerates. But if there is degeneration in there, there is research out there saying that it's not going to have much of an effect on you. Uh, and there's other things that you could take instead of, or definitely things you should be taking with the glucosamine. For example, uh, omegas. Omega three is really important. It's good for cell health. It's good for uh, joint health. Vitamin D is really good for cell health, and it helps uptake uh, the glucosamine into the into the cells, into the bone, and then uh, calcium too. Calcium is really good because that helps the bone health as well. So if you're taking it alone, again, I wouldn't know how degenerated your joint is, um, but usually that's not enough. And usually, if it's degenerated, it's a little too late. So we should stop taking it when we're 20, 30 years old, so we don't ever get through to that degeneration process. Hello? Did you say Medicare will cover something? Yes, yeah, so, Medi so Medicare will cover 80% of whatever medical services you have going on, be it uh, you go to hospital or you go to a private medical office. And usually what we find is the supplemental insurance will cover the rest of what Medicare does. So we have a, a, a large, yeah, we accept Medicare, we accept uh, supplemental. We have a large Medicare uh, population in our office that we help with, similar to with knee pain, with back pain, with uh, you know, all sorts of ailments. And Medicare will cover the majority of it. What it doesn't cover is supplemental, usually picks up the rest. So do you just want like therapy if you have pain in the back and you don't have osteoarthritis? Yeah, exactly. So each patient will be different. Uh, and that's what we tailor ourselves or what we like to tailor to in the office. 
there's, unfortunately there's no one size fits all. So the key to it is finding that individual, finding out what their issue is, and then based on the clinical findings, the exam findings, and usually the x-ray finding, your treatment plan will pertain to you. So if you have low back pain, your treatment plan will be different to this gentleman who are might have knee pain, or this lady who are, might have neck pain. It will be individualized to you. Yeah. Yeah, we have in our office, it's a, I put a 360 degrees in wellness, so we have a medical doctor in there, we have a physician assistant who works with the medical doctor who performs a lot of the, the procedures, and then we have chiropractors, we have physical therapists, so in our office, I like to call it 360 degrees of wellness, we can help people in many different ways, and the beauty of pain and wellness group is, we have all those physicians and all that expertise that you may be someone who comes in and need this, and you may come in and need this, all depending on you, based on what you need to get. Yeah? Where are you from? Oh, I'm English. Yeah. I'm English, yeah. But I did all my schooling in America. Yeah, I moved over here a little while ago, and uh, yeah, I've, I've been schooled in America for a good while. I'm holding on to the accent now. Yeah. I'm holding on to the accent, for sure. Hello. Hi, Ross. I have bone on bone. Okay. I have the uh, sit ice syrup. Okay, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And then we had done again. Okay. It was nothing. Okay. And it, it, we find that sometimes in the fact that people get relief and then once the body kind of realizes why you got relief is in the substance um, that you had in there. A lot of times, the more time you take it will be less effective. For example, your cortisone probably every time you take it, the time span of your relief will be shorter and shorter. There are other things you can do. What you said to me, you probably had the serapin in there. The serapin is really good for inflammation and getting rid of the inflammation. Now, there are other things you can do other than the serapin, for example, the uh, hyaluronic injections, they're kind of state-of-the-art stuff, that's a replacement for cyanobial fluid. So serapin is more anti-inflammatory, helps the joint get rid of the inflammation, whereas the, the hyaluronic will actually lubricate that joint, and by lubricating the joint, it creates less inflammation because you're not uh, I, I might have misheard you, but there are different brands. Uh, there are different brands, but there are other things you can do if that isn't working. Bracing one, strengthening the knees, another. Um, you just got to help that joint move and be as stable as possible. So sometimes, like we said, the high, or the high, you know, the, the substance that you had will give you relief, but when you combine it with the other things, that kind of takes the relief off the other. If you just do one thing, it kind of limits uh, the benefits we have there. You are. The the Yeah, so there are some effect, yeah, so the cortisone that you're having probably wouldn't be from the coma to Turkey. If you have a cortisone, cortisone, it's usually steroid uh, injection, and that's not from the coma to Turkey. The coma to Turkey is probably more the, from the lady behind you kind of talked on. If you're having the injection from the the, co the naps. When poultry, tiki, turkey, and roosters grow talons, they grow them really quickly. So it has a lot of cyanobial fluid in that because they grow so quick. So the drug companies have come up with a way to kind of engineer that and create it so they can put it into the body. And there are people that have that. And if you're having that, then it's probably a better source of having the cortisol. But having that alone probably isn't enough. You probably need to do some other things with it. Any more questions, guys? If you use a brace, does that affect your muscles? Um, using a brace will kind of change your gait function a little bit, for sure. Um, so the trick to a brace is not relying on it too much, because if we do rely on it, things kind of do atrophy a little bit, or they do tend to get weak. So the critical part to all this, if we're talking about these, is yes, bracing is effective, but you have to do other work than just bracing. 
and that's usually kind of some uh, proprioceptive stuff, so some balance training, and then also some muscle activation stuff to stabilize and get those muscles nice and strong. So as you move with the brace, those muscles are still engaging and supporting that joint. Because if we're not engaging and supporting, then those muscles get weak, so when you don't have the brace on, that joint's, that, that, that joint's effectively uh, no better off. Yeah. So if you're bracing, great. If you have knee pain, that's really good. But make sure you do other things, accompanying a brace, so you get that joint moving for the full rain, and you get that joint really stable too. Uh, stable and strong. Sure. Any more questions, guys? Oh. Okay, guys, if there's no more questions, uh, I'll hang around for another 10 minutes if any of you want to come and speak to me personally. Um, I believe Rosanna's got something to say to you guys for another five, ten minutes, and then you can all talk into the lovely food that they all want for. But uh, Kim and I will be here for another ten minutes, so if you'd like to come on in and have another chat one on one, feel free to do so. We'd love to help you and uh, get you in the office for sure. I appreciate it. Thank you all for listening. you know, get more information, maybe went through very quickly the first time. This program, this whole event with Dr. Stringer, will be on our village cable, uh, the regular indoor park, you know, cable system. Um, what is it, TV, something's called? TV VP style. That's it, TV VP style. And it's 8 a.m. and 8 p.m. starting tomorrow. So I want to get on there and take a look at the cable program. You'll see this program twice for a few days does it run? For a month. A month, okay. So you can get, you know, refresh look some information, look at the, the pictures, the uh, video, uh, the screen. So, yeah. Plus Dr. Street will be here for a little while still. Um, he's also welcome to come along with us. I appreciate it very much. One thing I wanted to uh, thank you is those who filled out the aging in the community form. If you still can do one, you haven't done it, you have time today, we'd like you to do that. Uh, the Senior Concerns Commission is compiling this information for the Village Board. And it, all you have to do is like under the top one where it says medical, what's underneath there, just check it if you think it's uh, pertinent to Villa Park. Is it something that is helping you because you live in Villa Park? For instance, health facilities, doctors, hospitals. You may think, oh yeah, Elmer's Hospital is close, or we have Villa Medical Arts in town. So, you know, see if these things are uh, pertinent. There's a variety of categories. If you can do this, we can use as many uh, responses as possible so that the uh, survey will be of value. You actually have a real meaning for the whole community. Also, um, uh, what was I going to mention? I'm sorry. Um, the, also, the Senior Concerns Commission meets the first Monday at 6 p.m. at the Village Hall every month. If any of you would like to come, you are welcome. We would like to hear any comments you have, anything you feel that we should be uh, like focusing on as a commission. Uh, we've done a few things, done that uh, directory, uh, we're doing you know the survey, we're trying to kind of see how our town fits in to help seniors stay at home. So you can stay in the house, <coughs> stay in the home you love, if you can, you know, health-wise, you can afford the, you know, the taxes and you know the whole picture of home ownership. You can do that. We want to keep you in the village. We hate to have people go, you know, live in Lombard and go to assisted living or independent living somewhere else. Uh, but anyway, uh, the, the village is interested. We kind of want to know if we're doing things right or you know things are not so hot. Today, uh, the Senior Concerns Commission has a lunch, and those of you that might be concerned about the meat, it is uh, spinach lasagna. So uh, hopefully it'll be a meal that everyone can share today. And you are welcome. And we are going to start in just a few minutes, maybe about maybe 10 minutes earlier than usual, once everybody has their place. And if you don't want to talk to you know, consult Dr. Stringer anymore or anything else, uh, we'll, we will start our lunch. And uh, Detective Rungi, anything from police? I do. I just want a reminder, it is tax season. and. We are getting some phone scans where someone's calling up to pretend to be an IRS agent and they're saying you owe us 
five thousand dollars, we're going to throw you in jail. Okay, the IRS doesn't work like that. So if you do get a phone call, just hang up. If you are concerned, maybe that you do owe money to the IRS, call the IRS directly. But it's just another phone scam, and now it's tax season. That's what they're doing. Um, along with the other ones, like you may have a, a grandson in jail. It's, it's similar to that, but they're going to threaten you with jail and. We've had some people victimized by it, so just, you know, anything over the phone, if you're not comfortable with the phone call, just hang up and call that number directly back, so, okay? With that being said, does anyone have any questions? Anything that happened in the village you wanna be concerned about, talk about anything? Okay, and I'll be here too, around, so if you guys have any questions for me. Also, um, if you can, let me know about guest speakers, what you guys want to hear and stuff. I, I do the guest speakers, I round them up, so if you guys do have some ideas, please let me know. I'd be more than happy to reach out to whoever and you know, get a presentation for you, so. Okay? I have a question. Sure. Um, somebody had just mentioned about the, um, the stickers for your car now, for your vehicle stickers, that no, they're not sending out notices anymore, so you should really look at your license plates. Yeah, very true. Your license plates do expire every year at the same time, so just kind of keep a mental note. The state's trying to save some money, um, so they're not sending out the notices, but so it's up to you guys to uh, get them renewed. But those of you that have access to uh, email, they will, if you sign up for it through their website, Secretary of State, they will send you a notification via email. So that's something you can sign up for. If I have done mine online, all this time, I still, I still got the notice. Will they send me something that way? Or, I think because they gave me a pin that I would have to plug yeah. in there, and I don't know how that would work anymore. I just wondered they you know. should send you, because you, I know you can sign up for notifications, okay, so I'm, I'm okay. assuming if they have your email address, they want. Yes? I got a form with the pin number and everything off, but they don't tell you where to send it to, and a lot of people know. Where to get the sticker? No, where to send this so that I will get an email telling me that my sticker is due. Um, as far as I know, you just got to go to their website and you can get notification that way. Is that what you're talking about? Yeah. Yeah, just go to the Secretary of State um, website. It's, it's Cyber Drive, Illinois, I think. So it's something like that if you just want to search that. It's usually under cyber drive. Do it through the library. The library will help get online if they don't have. Okay. It's good. The library will help you. Yes. The letter that we got at the end said, "See you in September." So does that mean there's no more meetings till September? It did. Yeah. I do a lot of cuts and pasting, so that's why. <laughs> No, the next one will be May, so the second Wednesday in May, so I apologize for that. That's okay, just one Yeah, but we will have one in September. So we meet four times a year, February, May, September, and then December. So I apologize for that. That's good. I try to proofread them, I must have missed it. Okay, thank you guys. Thank you.